This is Larry Jordan, the host of the Digital Production Buzz. The following interview is an excerpt from a recent program. To hear the entire program, visit digitalproductionbuzz.com. Serena Catania is the supervising producer of The Buzz, as well as a filmmaker, a journalist, and former senior executive with United Artists and MGM. She's also one of the founders of the Sundance Film Festival, and today she's coming to us live from Belgium, where she <laughs> is, well, we're going to say she's filming one of her documentaries, but what she's actually doing there, we'll find out more in just a minute. Hello, Serena, welcome. Well, hi, Larry, from Belgium. Yeah, I tell you, you are <laughs> peripatetic. You were in California just a couple of days ago, and you're en route to the Berlinale, which we'll talk about more in just a second. But, you know, I was just thinking... Now that you've been in Europe for all of 24 hours, what is it that strikes you about television in Europe? Well, I'm always blown away by how much influence the United States has all over the world. And we were watching some television last night. I was watching the Belgian version of The Voice. And I'm not talking about an American voice with subtitles, the Belgian version of The Voice. And I know they have several versions, but it was... It just struck me that there's so much U.S. programming, but that there's also programming that have been influenced by the United States that's running here. Well, I know that you're just stopping in Belgium for a, Belgium for a day or two, but uh, heading off to Berlinale after that. What's happening uh -huh. at the Berlin uh -huh. Film Festival? You know, Berlin is, I, I call it my guilty pleasure every year because, to me, it is one of the most prominent festivals in the world. I just found out today their budget for the festival is 23 million euros on average every year. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. It's huge. But what's even more interesting is that the German federal government, the Commission on Culture and Media, provides almost 7 million of that. So that tells you how much the government is really behind the filmmaking and television and artistic community in Germany. And that's why I think so many talent is uh, recruited from there. Well, how would you dif differentiate between Sundance, which I know you have a, a lot of familiarity with, and Berlinale and Seikan? What makes, are they all the same, just different cities, or are they different? No, I would say of all of those festivals, the Berlin Film Festival is the one that really brings a true love of film. As a matter of fact, here in Berlin, during the competition, the press that are there refer to the films as the country that they originate in. So they'll say, have you seen the German film yet? Or have you seen the Filipino film yet? Or have you seen the American film yet? It's really interesting. And also for me as a director, I'm always struck by how much they respect directors here. They talk about the directors. And they, there's really a lot of homage towards directors here. But they screen in Berlin, they screen over 400 films in various categories. To give you kind of a picture of Berlin, you have the major competition, which I really enjoy. I'm going to see in 10 days 25, about, I think, 25 films this year. Mm. But they also have their retrospectives, and they have a lot of independent and art house films for what they call the panorama. And then they have a whole section of films just for young audiences and made by young people. We've had the head of the German cinema section on the buzz. Um, there's a whole lot of shorts, and then they have the forum, which is really the experimental and avant-garde film. And also this year, they're going to do uh, indigenous films from all over the world. And, you know, if that doesn't <laughs> solve your appetite for films, there's also a whole series of films called culinary cinema. <laughs> so <laughs> you can pretty much have anything you want. Um, so it's really, in a way, it's, it's like putting a very hungry person in front of a huge smorgasbord. But um, Meryl Streep's head of the jury this year. Well, what does the jury do? Okay, so the competition, the jury for the competition, actually, we, we sit every year, my little group sits right behind the jury in the Palast, the Grand Palast, um, and the jury, there's, I think, um, I don't know, eight of them, and they watch all the films, and then they deliberate, and they vote on the films. So the jury is very, very powerful. And this is for the main competition films. So Meryl Streep is there, and um, there's a German, famous German actor, Lars Egginger, and then the U U.K. film critic, Nick James. I'm excited because the French photographer, Brigitte Lacombe, is going to be there. And then you probably know Clive Owen from the U.K., uh, and then an Italian actress, Alba Rohrwacher, 
And then the Polish filmmaker who won many awards, and she actually got the Silver Bear last year for Best Director, Malka Zorata Zumoska. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else, Larry? They're screening 77 documentaries in the Meet the Docs series over at the EFM. I'm particularly torn this year because, you know, I love doing documentaries, and, in fact, I am working on one here in Belgium. But um, there's a whole section on financing and distribution, and they bring experts from all over the world to talk about that. But there's a separate issue that I want to have you talk about very quickly. Mm -hmm. There's the the film festival where people are able to watch films, the 400 films Mm -hmm. that you talked about. But there's also the film Mm -hmm. market, which is of interest to filmmakers because it's how they can turn their films into cash. What's that? Exactly. The EFM is about, I don't know, 400 companies come from all over the world, and they have uh, about, I don't know, 8,000 buyers. I don't know how many they're going to have this year, but I believe last year it was 8,000 buyers came from 95 countries. And simultaneously, they have the co-production market and the Berlinale talents. So on the money-making side and the distribution side, you have an entire huge venue that's not too far away from where we're going to be screening all the competition films. But that's where those 77 documentaries are going to be. So if you want to know anything about documentaries, you're going to be over there watching the panels and listening to what they say about who's paying what and how much. So there's the money side, and then there's the creative side. And for me, I hear a lot because of what we do on the buzz and because of you know where I migrate during the year. I hear a lot about the financing distribution, but for me, the pure joy of the creative of some of the best films that are coming in from all corners of the world, that to me is the inspiration that drives everything. What determines if a film is accepted for screening? Because I suspect like most film festivals, there's more entries than there are slots. There are, and that is a yearly mystery, because nobody (laughs) says anything about uh, why they particularly pick these films. But the committee that picks the films, every year, Larry, we go in and we start watching movies, and we tend to be very, very critical about why they pick this, why did they pick that. But by the time the festival's over and you've seen these 20 to 30 films in competition, it's just amazing. But no... There's really seems to be no formula, but that's part of the beauty of it, because you can never predict what you're going to see. They are amazing films, though. That, that's something. You know, we don't always agree on what we like or don't like, and, um, and it's really interesting because after the films, you'll see groups of press people and film goers and filmmakers huddled in groups, like we were in the old days at Sundance, just kind of discussing the films and, and really dissecting them. It's, it's just pure art form. It sounds like a wonderful, wonderful time. And when does the festival start? It starts actually in a few days. I think the official day is like the 12th. I'm going over in a couple of days. I'm working here for a couple more days, and then I'm going to migrate to, to Berlin by train. <laughs> and um, I'm actually this year doing something really interesting. I'm not going to film video with a big camera. I'm taking my iPad Pro. And I'm going to do my interviews using the iPad Pro, which is something totally different for me, but I think it's going to be less rigorous. And, of course, I'll have a lot of stills I'll take with the the two stills cameras I take with me. But the iPad Pro on a uh, tripod with the with a connection to the tripod, and then I'll do my sound um, using some of the Sennheiser rigs, most likely. That sounds like a wonderful time. What we'd like to do is bring you back next week and get an update on what's happening at the Berlinale Film Festival. Serena, where can people go to keep track of you on the web? Go to thecataniagroup.com or filmvault.biz. That's thecataniagroup.com and Serena Catania herself, supervising producer for The Buzz and peripatetic traveler about the world. (laughs) Serena, thanks for joining us today. (laughs) Thanks, Larry. Good night. Take care. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. To stay connected and receive updates from The Buzz, sign up for our free weekly newsletter now. Or you can learn more about us on our website. And thanks for watching The Digital Production Buzz.